is question four of exam one on matrices, and students found it quite difficult, particularly as it was only a question four. I mean, usually the most difficult questions are seven or eight, but let's have a look at it. It's a question about um, matrix multiplication and interpreting the meaning of a matrix multiplication. So we're given some coins, five, 10, 20 cents, and 50 cents, and the number of each of those coins in a money box. And we're asked to find a matrix product that displays the total number of coins and the total value of these coins. So here are our five options. But if we go back to the question and if we ignore the options and actually try to interpret how would we do this. So we want the total number of coins. Well, reading from our table, we have that it's just the sum 15 plus 32 plus 48 plus 24. And the next thing we want is the total value of these coins. Well, the 5 cents are worth 15, the 10 cents are worth 32, etc. So we're going to multiply and add. Now, it's these two things that we want in our matrix product. So if we go back to our options now and look for which one of those five products has each of those two things. Well, if we look at option A, um, that matrix product is only going to give us a one by one matrix, so we can definitely rule that out. And same goes for D. If we look at option B now, well, look at that first row, first column. That's going to give us 15 plus 32 plus 48 plus 24. So that's good. And if we look at uh, first row, second column, that's actually going to give us that second product that we need, which is the total value of the coins. So we're all good with B. We could check C and E to rule them out. But that's how we interpret that, that matrix multiplication. Question three on exam two was the last matrices question. It's about a travel company and the travelers have four choices, air, land, sea, or no travel at all. And we're given this matrix T, which is a transition matrix from one year to the next. We're also given a steady state matrix. And um, we won't go through the first few questions, but the tricky questions were the last ones. Part C, which is asking about the customers who chose sea travel in 2014, how many of them would be expected to choose sea travel again in 2015? And part D is a similar thing, but the opposite way. So of those customers who chose air travel in 2015, if we go back a year, what percentage of them would have chosen air travel in 2014? So going backwards there is, is going to be a bit harder, but let's do C first. So we'll need to look at that transition matrix again and our steady state matrix, which remember is 2014. Now, what we care about is the customers who chose C travel in 2014. Well, where are they? Uh, they are those 80 customers here. And we want to know in 2015, well, that's going to be S1. How many of these 80 end up in this C row in 2015. Well, where does that C row come from? We take our third row in our transition matrix uh, and multiply it by the state matrix in order to calculate the people who are doing C travel in 2015. Okay, but again, we, we don't want the total of those people. What we care about is of the customers who chose C travel in 2014. So of these 80 people, well, at 0 0.25 of them. So that's going to be the answer to our question, which is going to be 20 customers. Okay, so feel free to watch that again if you want to digest it a bit more. Um, but let's look at part D, which is a similar thing, but the opposite way around. Of those who chose air travel in 2015, what percentage of them would have chosen air travel in 2014? Okay, so let's set up our um, matrix equation again. And now what we care about is the air travelers in 2015. So where would they come from? Again, from our transition matrix and our state matrix. And we want to know what percentage of them 
would have chosen air travel in 2014. Because we're wanting a percentage of these customers, we're going to actually need to work out that value so that we can work out the percentage. So we can go ahead and do that. You could either do that as a matrix multiplication, like typing the whole thing in and looking at the first row, um, or just, uh, just typing out that multiplication for the first row, because we don't need all the rows. What we do need now is we need to look at how many of those customers would have chosen air travel in 2014. So where would they be? Well, in S0, they're going to be here, but it's not all of those 520. It's only 0.65 of 65% of them. Okay, so of those 478, 65% of them, which is 338, uh, would have chosen air travel in 2014. And then we calculate the percentage by dividing. So there's quite a lot of thinking involved in that question, and it's only one mark. It's the very last question on matrices, um, but it's one to, to practice those style of questions if you're aiming for those 40 plus scores.